Well, today we would uh, continue with the socio-cultural causes behind uh, psychological disorders. Uh, we had already talked about uh, uh, the importance of the significance of uh, violence and how it can become a, a primary responsible cause for several type of psychological problems. Uh, we did take into account the fact that a uh, large number of uh, clinical symptoms, which was later on known to the practicing world, the scientific world, the research community, the academic community, a uh, large chunk of that has been an outcome of the world war, second world war especially. Uh, some peculiar type of uh, uh, human behavior was even uh, identified, it was later on listed in the DSM classification, which was basically a byproduct of the uh, Vietnam war. Okay. There has been a whole history of uh, know how uh, violence that uh, persists in a culture keeps on influencing uh, uh, the psyche of an individual. And if you have uh, seen uh, the visuals from uh, Middle East right now, okay, many a times you would uh, realize that you have very disturbing type of visuals. No? Now imagine a situation that we at a distance of few thousand kilometers find only the visual to be so disturbing, how disturbed the individuals who would have actually been experiencing it, okay, they might be uh, feeling. Okay. Uh, in fact, in our own country, if especially uh, two specific regions of our country, uh, a selected part of the northeastern region of India and Jammu and Kashmir, that very region. Uh, there has been a whole lot of study, okay, uh, less from a psychological viewpoint because it is very difficult to get the primary data uh, in most of the cases, uh, but mostly uh, you know, studies uh, which are part of uh, uh, media studies, which are part of sociological studies. Okay. And if you uh, combine them together, you would realize you know, that uh, this whole issue of uh, violence uh, which has persisted in certain geographical locality for more than a decade, how it has adversely affected the psyche of the individuals. I must tell you, uh, several years back there was a painting competition uh, for uh, the children who belong to the northeastern region. Okay. Uh, I am sure you must be aware that the armed forces, uh, know they uh, conduct goodwill tour for uh, school going children, uh, which are basically like uh, uh, taking children from uh, these conflict regions. Uh, they arrange for uh, their uh, tour to India okay. and then these children are made to you know, go for uh, tour to some selected regions of the country. The reason being is that uh, uh, first you get a chance to see the rest of the India, uh, two you uh, get a chance to appreciate uh, you know, the non-existence of conflicting involvement and three and most important for them that is you know that you realize uh, you know that armed forces is your friend not your enemy. So a part of uh, one such exercise was this painting competition for the children from the north east and it was uh, very surprising to see that uh, the children who were from the northeastern region a large majority of them had uh, you know uh, painted uh, some or the other reflection of violence. Okay. So either you have killing, you have uh, bloodshed, even you have a scenic beauty, you have somebody carrying a gun. Okay. So now children right from the beginning, those who have seen only such type of situation, for them life is altogether much more different. Uh, you must be aware, uh, we had discussed this uh, case you know, of uh, the conflict between uh, that uh, when this uh, Bosnia Herzegovina conflict was on, the army commander who ordered for a gang rape, uh, finally got the women tested if they have been impregnated or not. And then later on, you know, uh, talking to the court of law and saying that this was something like a victory forever. We had discussed this very example here in the class. No? So these are the situations which makes you realize that you are really at uh, risk. And because you are 
are at risk, you realize now that uh, certain changes automatically starts coming within you. Now, this violence was at a larger scale when you realized that the whole of the geographical region where you are living is under constant threat and the threat is for your own survival, the threat is also for the survival of your loved ones. There could be a situation where you have violence within the family. Okay. So, now it is very very limited area, but then once again you become the primary uh, victim of the violence inflicting situation. Okay. And this is usually a case where you realize that uh, you know, uh, two or more members of the family they are uh, mostly engaged in uh, you know, uh, conflicting situation and the conflict usually you know, tends towards some degree of violence. Uh, and usually you know uh, you find that uh, it is not an individual family, but the whole locality has some type of you know uh, violence prone type of a behavior. We have certain segments in our country, uh, I do not know if, uh, how many of you have been to sociology courses, uh, but in sociology uh, you come to know that uh, you know uh, the way the notification for the tribal community was done in our country. Okay. Few tribes were identified that these are the tribes who uh, you know which are engaged into unlawful activities. The way the law was defined at that time, they were defined that these are the tribes they were identified and that was a long list. Okay. And uh, right after independence, the government of India decided that they will start rehabilitating these tribes making them realize that what you do basically is an unlawful act. Okay. Theft for example, stealing for example, prostitution for example, okay. all these were uh, no categorized in the constitution of India as illegal activities. And then the government had a long list of uh, tribes uh, saying that fine these are the tribes which are mostly engaged into such type of activities. Okay. And, uh, whole uh, no government uh, machinery was put into place so that these tribes can be rehabilitated they can be uh, no offered uh, some type of uh, uh, livelihood and the primary intention was to disengage them from doing whatever they were involved simply because what they were involved was unlawful according to the constitution of india i don't know if you are aware that very close to iit uh, no in the kalyanpur region you have one such tribe which was rehabilitated. Okay. So, if you are interested you can dig out the details, okay. you can still find their houses there, it was the government plan to rehabilitate them here. Okay. Now, uh, these were uh, basically the attempts to uh, make uh, the whole of uh, a geographical region or uh, surgical part of uh, any geographical region uh, much more conducive enough for the survival of human beings. But even in cases, even in the last uh, module when we were talking about aggression, okay, one important thing about aggression was that if you are born and brought up in an environment which is full of violence, full of aggression, then uh, you start somehow repeating it, reflecting it in your behavior. You do not find wrong in doing whatever uh, otherwise would be considered to be uh, an errorful, not doable type of an act. Okay. Uh, psychologically speaking, two things are important over here. One, uh, that repeated exposure of violence will uh, know, make you gradually become desensitized to such acts. Okay. You would find a, a student among uh, your own group, who would be very sensitive to even uh, say some type of uh, name call for example or if you use a slang for uh, you know, that very individual, that individual takes it as a great insult. If that individual has lived in an environment, where such things are not practiced, you know, it is a very decent type of a living, where you realize that such words are not used. Okay. Compared to uh, you know, children who are born and brought up in an environment, where on the minest, uh, you know, minutest of the error that you commit. Okay, you receive a physical punishment. Okay. 
and there would be a huge difference between these things. No? Similarly, uh, if you uh, are born and brought up in a family in an environment where no guns, shorts, knives, no these things are easily available, uh, very generously used. Okay, pre and post uses you can see very uh, conveniently. Okay, you become very desensitized to these things. No, uh, very close to Kanpur. No. Um, Itawa onwards when you start moving towards the west, okay. uh, carrying a, a, a weapon is usually considered to be an object of pride, okay. you do not consider it to be an indecent act okay. and more and more you move towards the eastern side, okay, such things are uh, no, not considered to be a replicable act. Okay. That is basically the difference in terms of how gradually you get desensitized. Because children when they are born, when they are growing up, okay, they do not know whether it is eastern or the western part of a, a given a province. Okay. They are not aware of the social norm, they are not aware what is legal, what is illegal. It is basically what you see in your uh, surrounding and you start gradually imitating it. Okay. But the worst comes from a psychological angle when you realize uh, that you hit somebody, you uh, do it very conveniently, very generously and you do not repent for it. Okay. And the extreme of it would be that you uh, shoot somebody, you stab somebody okay. and then uh, take pride in doing that okay. and so as to prove your uh, uh, power that how powerful you are. You can stab whoever you, whoever you want, you can kill somebody whoever you want okay. and you are above law. Okay. So, abusing, slapping, stabbing, killing none of these uh, are uh, no, cause of concern for you and because you are you get gradually exposed to it therefore, there is certain degree of psychological numbness to such type of experiences. Okay. This is what is called as uh, systematic desensitization in psychology. Okay. So, violence the worst thing that it does to you is that it makes you extremely conditioned uh, to certain format of behavior which otherwise is not considered to be a healthy format of behavior one and two uh, in such type of situations which otherwise causes deep sense of uh, pain to others it does not hurt you anywhere. Okay. Problem comes from a pathological viewpoint when either you over do start uh, when you start overdoing the act. Okay. This would mean that you become a psychopath or when you are under sustained fear and then you start showing a whole range of symptoms. Okay. Uh, gradually we will come to uh, know many of those symptoms, okay. uh, but this is the whole story behind uh, know this type of a sociocultural environment. Then another important thing where uh, you have prejudice against a group and therefore, one smaller group which is discriminated compared to the majority who rules the community. Okay. And uh, uh, I am sure you must be aware of uh, know, uh, certain things that was later on in inculcated as policy matter in our country, uh, I will come to it little later. Uh, but Right from the beginning, if you read uh, know the uh, cultural history of our country, you would realize that uh, selecting individuals or group of individuals based on their caste, class, creed, sect, religion, this was too common. Okay, until date, you find certain things being happening, and that was a way wherein a group of individuals were always deprived of certain uh, privileges that another set of individuals used to enjoy. Even in uh, our uh, epics, you find the description of it. Okay, you take uh, know Ramayana for example, and you realize that uh, Ram, when he was he returned back and uh, became the king, okay, uh, he was told that uh, there is uh, somebody in your uh, kingdom called Shambhuk, okay, who belongs to a lower class, and he is not supposed to know. Uh, live a sagely life okay. and uh, Ram went and uh, assassinated him, killed him okay, that you belong to certain group okay, 
and it is the privilege of the Brahmins to practice this and therefore, you do not deserve to live. Okay. In Mahabharata you find the same description when you have uh, you know, um, what was his name Karn okay. uh, willing to learn from the same uh, Guru and uh, Ronacharya refuses him and says that fine because you do not belong to the Kshatriya clan therefore, you would be deprived of the privilege of sharpening your skill. Okay. In the same Mahabharata you find the description when uh, uh, no, I am still not getting the name the boy who uh, no, considered Dronacharya as his guru and is practiced on his own Eklavya. No? You have a whole lot of descriptions so, right from epic still today you would realize that there is a whole set of uh, no, uh, discrimination that is somehow inbuilt in the culture no, the way we live. Now, if you realize that there you have deliberately been uh, no, uh, taken out from the group and certain disadvantage is put to you okay. this itself in turn could be extremely detrimental for your mental health whole set of things you can realize uh, we have uh, talked about uh, the biological causes behind uh, uh, certain type of psychological disorders at that time we had talked about mental retardation but I must tell you that if you statistically look at uh, those who are mentally retarded uh, approximately uh, 3 to 5 percent of mentally retarded are retarded not because of biological reason, but because of socio cultural reasons okay. something that should actually not happen, but it happens. Okay. Uh, in psychology you would find good amount of literature on sensory deprivation okay. that you are deprived of certain sensory stimulation. Okay, in the formative years of your life and therefore, certain domains of your brain does not grow the way it should actually have evolved. Okay. Uh, and coming back to the example that I told you that we will take up later in our country you know uh, somebody at uh, AIMS the all India institute of medical sciences conducted whole lot of research uh, to force the government. Uh, convince the government force it to you uh, to inbuilt it in a plan suggesting that uh, no iodine deficiency is extremely important for individuals because it because it has to do with cognitive development because it has also to do with uh, the whole problem of thyroid deficiency. Okay. But uh, recently if you look at uh, the set of research especially uh, the type of research being conducted within our own country in terms of certain nutritional deficiencies and uh, the underdevelopment uh, that takes place in the brain and underdevelopment studied uh, on the basis of the functional magnetic resonance then you realize that even uh, vitamin uh, b1 vitamin uh, b12 the deficiency of these two uh, vitamins is also extremely common in our country okay and because you are deficient on say uh, b1 or b12 finally your brain gets affected okay somehow this is still not part of our policy and therefore we have uh, iodine based salt but we do not have food ingredients where the government policy ensures that you have b1 and b12 uh, in the food or supplementary stuff okay so uh, somehow it has been realized uh, know that if you have been deliberately deprived of certain uh, privileges on the basis of certain discrimination that the society practices it itself uh, no could backfire okay and it could lead to both the types of things no either uh, no it uh, induces certain type of psychological problem within you or uh, it could even lead to certain degree of uh, no uh, inbuilt uh, aggressive tendency within you because you would definitely ensure that you flout the cap that has been put above you important thing once again is also the continuous struggle that you have to make in terms of making your life very very stable. Okay. A large chunk of uh, our population uh, which has to continuously struggle for uh, food both the times there are shocking statistical figure if you look at them okay, that is a large percentage of the population in our country uh, which has the opportunity of having the food only once in a day means you cannot have two meals in a day okay. 
large num large population okay and especially in last uh, 10 15 years a shocking uh, statistical figure is now becoming glaringly visible uh, which is that the those who could afford okay have become much more affluent and can afford more and those who were deprived and did not have the opportunity to afford the meals two time they have become much more poorer okay this is again a very different type of a skewed development that we find in our society rich becoming more richer and poor becoming more poorer okay this is again a very different type of a, a thing but we are anyhow now right now not looking at things from a demographers view point what we are primarily suggesting is that if you have to continuously struggle for uh, your survival you gradually realize that certain things by default will start reflecting in your behavior no for example anxiety okay now somebody who has continuously been struggling and is completely unsure about what is going to happen uh, say uh, for my evening meal okay you are bound to remain anxious all through no because there is a great degree of uncertainty that has been inbuilt you live in a hut meant and you always uh, know have a looming fear that any day you know the municipal corporation bulldozer can come and destroy the whole hut meant where we live okay now if you live with such type such type of uncertainty in your life okay it is bound to you know make you very very susceptible to certain type of psychological problems and very interesting uh, is the last point that is the whole speed uh, at which the changes are taking place no the whole uh, uh, no accelerating social changes doesn't allow you to adapt to you with the frequency okay with the speed at which the changes takes place no all changes will take place very rapidly okay and you take time to you know adapt to it by the time you adapt to one uh, no change that has taken place within that time uh, another big change will come into being you can ask your uh, grandparents and uh, in many cases even your uh, parents would narrate you very interesting stories stories that you have not seen okay uh, large part of it we saw right from our uh, adolescent years till adulthood okay where many many new things were introduced no especially for example uh, uh, the whole uh, railway reservation for example okay uh, even earlier days you asked uh, uh, all those who uh, had to travel and were planning to get their seats reserved in the train okay they would have to stand in the queue uh, you know one day in advance say approximately 12 to 12 hours in advance uh, the earlier graduates of iit bombay will tell you that uh, you know uh, during vacation when they had to come to this part of the country okay uh, the whole night they would spend on uh, the platform okay waiting in the queue okay because it was very difficult to get a reserved seat in the train okay less number of trains and then it was everything was too manual too slow so right from the manual days uh, no to a time when now we have all types of internet based booking okay imagine uh, no those who were uh, no caught in between okay those who were habitual of doing this okay how they would have switched to completely online based things i can share a very interesting ex, uh, example with you a couple of years back i was traveling in a train and one of my co passenger happened to be uh, the one who was uh, given the responsibility of training uh, these uh, railway booking clerks the first set of railway clerks okay who were into manual mode okay and they were uh, you no know, supposed to be trained on computer how to do the reservation and he was you know narrating all his experience very interesting thing <coughs> that he shared with me was uh, that uh, every day three or four systems will have certain problems okay there will be some technical snag and the concerned uh, trainee uh, will say that fine fine sir this system is not working okay and the whole intention was uh, you no know, uh, that anyhow i should get rid of this so great degree of reluctance and then what he did was uh, he said that i introduced that card games on the pc you know so the moment these card games were loaded okay none of the system used to crash 
none of the system used to develop technical snag all of them enjoyed playing the card game. So, first one or two day was invested only in the card game okay, and then gradually okay, those who were swifter in playing the games on their PCs these games were deleted and then they will complain and then finally, you know, because you have proven your ability in playing the card game this means that you can operate a PC now we start doing the reservation okay. and this is how they were trained. Okay. Uh, in those days I, I still even I remember you know, going to a, a reservation counter asking somebody who is doing it uh, using a PC and who would take longer time compared to uh, know what a manual booking would take okay. and I would not take the name, but uh, I know a very prestigious institute of this country where when the first time when the PC was introduced the head of uh, that unit would say that uh, uh, this should not be switched on no typing would take place on the PC. Okay. He would ask uh, his clerk the office clerk to type it on a manual typewriter he would correct it manually when all corrections are done manually then he will ask the operator now type it on the PC okay. and this is not a very old story hardly 40 year old story perhaps 40 year old story okay. in one of the most prestigious institutes of this country. Okay. These are interesting changes what I am trying to say is that technology will come very swift adaptation takes longer time when uh, say ATM machines were introduced okay, whole, whole lot of problem. No? Uh, I know I, I am sure you must be aware of this that all banks had to you know uh, introduce one uh, you know special feature in their ATM machines uh, that if you do not press a button for a certain time it will ask you that do you need more time. Okay because it was realized that people had great degree of difficulty because they will read all the instructions okay. and many things would be confusing for them no? cash withdrawal versus fast cash. Okay. Now, how do I decipher what means what okay. uh, problem was also in terms of uh, no, uh, ATM machines of different banks touch screen versus buttons. Okay, buttons on both the sides versus button only on the uh, right hand side okay. and uh, especially in uh, user design you will find lot many studies on motor functioning the speed of motor functioning versus uh, the speed of transaction on the screen okay. and how uh, know the whole struggle for uh, this ATM machine took place. Okay. Uh, there you will find even interesting cases like uh, know uh, special type of mobile handsets designed for elderly group okay, because they will they want very high volume they want very minimal functions okay, and they want larger buttons. So, that even with the shake of the hand if I press one only one should be pressed it is not that by the time it reaches the uh, no, uh, handset it goes to three that should not happen. But another uh, shocking part of this accelerating social change that we have not realized okay, is uh, know the whole uh, set of the youth who considers that they are very good at in, uh, in terms of uh, shifting from one to the other module. Okay. But then there is a whole lot of uh, know, uh, changes that has taken place. Okay. When we talk of accelerating social changes it is only uh, 55 plus who have difficulty especially 60 plus and uh, usually you know you would realize 40 45 plus who would reluctantly accept technology and that too very selectively okay but one important segment your age group okay which is uh, you know uh, usually considered to be a uh, very what you call dynamic young uh, age group which uh, never shows any problem with adapting to any technology but when you look at the psychiatric clinic the changes that has taken place in last 20 years okay you would realize that a large number of patients going to psychiatric clinics with especially two types of psychological disorders are the young age group your age group okay 
uh, anxiety attacks, panic anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorder. These two are nowadays in last 20 years, it is largely the younger population which has uh, gone to the clinic with these symptoms. And one of the primary responsible uh, you know, uh, change, uh, reason for that could be the speed at which they have to adapt to different types of things. Okay. Now, we come to the psychological causes, uh, nature, intensity, duration and appraisal of the life circumstances. How life has been for you? One, how intense has been uh, you know, the experiences that you had, the duration of uh, those life experiences, but far more important the appraisal process. No? You remember even uh, with respect to adjustment and maladjustment we had talked about the appraisal mechanism. No? You remember goal congruent and goal incongruent emotions and the appraisal of those emotions no? and finally, how they influence the adjustment. Similarly, it is uh, of course, the nature, the intensity, the duration of certain types of life experiences does matter, but what matters far more is that uh, know how one uh, uh, know goes for appreciating uh, those experiences. There could be life experiences okay, uh, which could be extremely adverse, but then later on you remove certain part of it. The good part of human being uh, is that after an episode is over and a time has passed, okay, we have a tendency of reflecting the, uh, upon our past, dragging few life experiences and when we recollect those experiences, largely those are uh, life experiences minus the emotional valency. Say for example, uh, you gave your uh, mid semester sheets for re-evaluation. Okay, and you were returned it back saying that fine, this is what finally is the score, no change has taken place and you find very bad. Okay, you feel oh, it is terrible thing to happen to you. Five years down the line, ten years down the line when you recollect that experience, it comes only as an experience. No? Uh, no, this nature of the, uh, the valency of that emotion is lost. So, it is neither happy nor sad, you just say ah, it happened once. Many of adverse life experiences comes this way, but that largely depends on you know how you, you know actually get into the appraisal process of the life experiences. We have talked about it you know when we were going through a stress and post traumatic stress, I am just uh, you know touching it once again. The whole issue of you know accommodating experiences versus assimilating experiences. Okay. So, whether you accommodate your experience, whether you assimilate your experience and then when you recollect your experiences, okay, is it that you go in a ruminative st state okay, or is it that you, you know uh, are much more into the reflective state. Okay. So, more and more ruminative individual you become, more and more prone you become to certain type of psychological problems. No? More and more reflective you are, you accept it that fine it happened to me but I know it happens to many individuals. I do not know why I was select, uh, selected for this type of life experience, but anyhow it has happened. I have experienced it, I have learned something from it, I have become much more grown up, much more mature. Okay. That could be one way of uh, looking at it. And if you look at life from this point of view, okay, then you realize that your susceptibility to certain type of psychological problems minimizes. Okay. Another important thing uh, is the maternal deprivation. No? If you are deprived of that uh, know, nurturance, affection, love, care, concern, okay, you have to pay, you might have to pay uh, some psychological price for it. There are once again you know, interesting studies in psychology where uh, know, uh, you will find that uh, uh, the effect of deprivation has been seen. Right now we were referring to sensory deprivation. Okay. In terms of maternal deprivation, you cannot uh, know, uh, isolate a human child from the mother and say that now you are put in, in now you are put in an experimental setup and for too long years you will be without your mother and I will see the effect on your psychology. That thing is not possible on human babies, but uh, you will find a couple of studies on animal babies. No? 
uh, especially uh, monkeys, uh, chimpanzees, okay, because they are considered to be much more closer to the human race. Therefore, you would find couple of studies, and one very interesting study you will find is uh, where uh, the baby monkey was kept in a cage, okay, and it was all artificial mothers kept in different cages. No? So, it was a wire mesh basically with a head of a mother monkey. Okay. So, it all wire mesh with the artificial head versus when you have a furry type of a cover over the wire mesh. Okay. And then it was realized that whenever this loud sound will be generated in the cage, this baby monkey will by default go and catch hold of the wire mesh. Even if it is wire mesh, the baby monkey will go and catch hold of it. Okay. There are very interesting video clips of it, no? you must watch it sometime. Okay. That how uh, fear forces you to select an object and surrender to it, saying that fine you can only safeguard me. Okay. And you can see it in human babies, no? the moment the child realizes that there could be uh, no, situation which is uh, too scary. Okay, or the child cannot comprehend whether it is good or bad okay, for its survival, the child will immediately go and surrender to the mother. Mother herself could be at risk, okay, but the child always feels that I am at the safest hand in the world. Okay. Now, it has been realized over studies that absence of such caring figure in the early stages of life could make you pay a psychological price for it and certain type of psychological disorders are largely uh, you know I can imagine that it could the chances of having those symptoms are higher in those who have experienced such type of deprivation in their life. Then comes the pathological family pattern, okay. the family itself has uh, you know certain type of uh, you know disturbance that uh, lies within even in socio cultural pattern we were talking about. You know, uh, violence that persists within the family. Here we are talking about the pathogenic type of pattern that persists in the family. All psychological disorders you will find that uh, know a certain percentage is dedicated to biological uh, transmission that is the chromosomal transmission and another, but a bigger percentage is dedicated to this pathological family pattern that if others in your family had this type of uh, problems, then the chances of you showing it sometime in your life increases. Maladaptive type of family structure, there is a great degree of disharmony within uh, the pattern within the family. Okay. Interpersonal relationship uh, that the individual has seen or himself or herself has maintained okay, has certain degree of pathology okay. and if you have been under the influence of severe stress for a sizable duration of time. Okay. Then also the chances are that you can develop some problems like this. What we would do now is that we would uh, broadly look at two categories of psychological disorders that are traditionally talked about that is the neurotic disorders and the psychotic disorders. And what we would do is that uh, uh, based on certain criteria, we would look at the basic uh, difference between the neurotic and the psychotic type of problems. Remember that our primary focus is still on uh, going into the diagnostic uh, details of the personality disorders and the adjustment disorders, but before we do that we will uh, see this uh, broad distinction. In terms of general behavior, if you look at the neurotic and the psychotic patterns of disorders and you compare them, you realize that uh, the neurotics have the maladaptive avoidance behavior. Okay. They also show certain mild to moderate degree of impairment in terms of their personal and social functions that they perform. Okay. And therefore, if you realize that there is an attempt to adjust, but it is maladaptive and largely it is avoidant in nature. One, two, in terms of uh, personal and social function, you realize that the individual shows certain degree of mild to moderate degree of impairment. If you have been a victim of one type of a neurotic disorder. 
compared to it in the case of psychotic disorders okay there are severe personality decompensations no so you show the severe, the nature of the problem becomes much more severe okay in the case of neurosis it was mild to moderate impairment compared to that in the case of psychosis marked impairment is seen okay in terms of contact with reality okay and therefore the impairment that is seen in terms of personal and social functioning is also very very severe in nature okay in terms of nature of symptoms okay in neurosis there is wide range of uh, psychological and somatic symptoms okay but what is very good is that you do not have any hallucination okay means you do not see or listen things in the absence of it or other extreme deviations in thought emotion or motor activity is also not seen in the case of neurosis whereas in the case of psychosis you find wide range of symptoms okay and usually they are extreme deviations in terms of thinking in terms of feeling in terms of doing so cognitive cognitive affective all the three domains are severely affected in the case of psychosis on both the criteria what you realize is that neurosis the severity is less in the case of psychosis the severity is much higher then comes uh, the difference between these two set of disorders in terms of orientation okay in neurosis there is uh, no usually uh, no orientation problem is not apparent and if there is an impairment of orientation that is of a very slight order okay so you do not get disoriented in terms of environment in terms of time in terms of place in terms of person so who are you where am i okay those things are not uh, seen in the case of neurotic disorders and if there is a possibility there is the slightest of the possibility whereas in the case of psychotic disorders you find uh, that there could be frequent loss of orientation okay uh, with respect to time place person in the environment okay so remember that amul had no ab mai kaha hu so repeatedly that thing can happen no so you are at a different place but psychologically you feel as if you are somewhere else so complete disorientation might take place in terms of insight okay that is attempt to understand the self in neurosis uh, frequently some understanding of own maladaptive behavior is usually seen okay and usually what happens in the case of neurosis is uh, that you feel that i have this thing in my behavior i think others don't have it therefore it might be a problem but you also simultaneously express your inability to control it for example uh, you know that uh, others wash their hand twice they will apply soap okay and then they will wash it once they will open the um, uh, tap and then they will wash it twice and they will see that no there is no stain or no mark of the soap left and that's it but when you wash it you wash it three times okay three times you take soap three times you clean your hand you rub it rub to the two palms and you then you rinse it uh, okay and you realize that the frequency of washing and the time you spent in washing hand in you is far higher compared to others in your uh, hostel but then simultaneously you also say that no 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 but you know uh, i can't stop it i feel still there might be some germs no i have seen ads showing that no even after uh, cleaning from certain type of uh, you know antiseptics one or two germs are also shown in the you no know, clean zone so i think there must be something so i clean it twice thrice a professional will tell you that this is basically a symptom of ocd no? you have some obsessive compulsive problem okay you do not you do not know the name you do not know the symptoms and therefore you do not consider it to be a disorder all you consider is that i probably have something but you know i can't control it that's the sense in uh, neurosis in psychosis there is a marked impairment of understanding of current symptoms and behavior no 
uh, I am sure you must have heard this joke that once uh, some prime minister visited uh, you know uh, ward of a mental hospital and introduced himself at I am uh, Mr. X the prime minister of India and the person said uh, yes yes before coming here I also used to say that I am the prime minister of the country. Okay, so, that is the gross sense of disorientation that you find in terms of self understanding no? <coughs> in the case of psychosis. So, there is a marked impairment in terms of understanding actually one own self okay. and then we come to the physically destructive uh, behavior. In neurosis behavior by uh, the neurotic uh, individual is rarely dangerous, no? it is not injurious okay, to anyone including the same individual. No? If you wash your hand 10 times Okay, you can wash it to the extent that you know your uh, part of your skin starts peeling off, okay, but other than that uh, you, know, you do not cause harm to anybody including your own self. Okay. But in the case of psychosis in uh, many cases you might realize that uh, the behavior of the individual is detrimental for the self or it is dangerous for others. Okay. And then uh, because we have talked about the causal factors, if you compare these two set of disorders in terms of the causal factors, then you realize that in uh, for neurosis uh, the emphasis is more on the failure to acquire the needed competency, you know. certain competencies were needed in you and somehow you do not have it okay. or you have uh, no learnt to cope with a given situation, but your learning is maladaptive, what you have learnt is not the appropriate way. Usually broadly you can say that this is what leads to such type of problems. Compared to that psychosis basically you know it is a maladaptive learning decompensation under excessive stress and in large number of cases it is due to some changes in the biochemistry of the individual. No? So, some neurotransmitter not being secreted to a certain level okay, and that becomes the reason for one or the other type of psychotic disorders. And uh, if you look at uh, the pattern in the clinical uh, practices you would realize that for neurotic disorders usually medicines are not needed. You, know, you uh, provide certain type of counseling, you provide certain type of uh, uh, behavior modification techniques, okay, certain type of psychotherapies are provided and that can bring the individual back to the normal pattern of behavior. No? So, say if somebody has uh, say panic attack for example, no? uh, suddenly uh, you happen to cross the road uh, near this entrance of the lecturer complex, uh, you saw a Tata Sumo coming from the other direction at a very fast speed and suddenly you know you had tremor in your entire body, you had profuse sweating, your heartbeat increased and all that was just for a moment. Okay. Then suddenly you regained your consciousness, you realized okay, I have thankfully I did not try to cross the road at that time. This is a panic attack. Okay. Uh, say for example, you keep washing your hand multiple times, okay. You are always uh, you know, scared of the fact that you know because I came here and sat in the class, the chairs, I do not know who are the people who sat here and therefore, uh, my clothes must have got contaminated, no? some germs might have come. So, every time when you go back to your room, okay, you remove all your clothes and put a new set. Okay. You could be phobic to you know, certain type of germs actually that you never see, this could be a phobic reaction. Okay. So, for such type of uh, things you do not need uh, know, uh, what you call a drug for it. Whereas, uh, in terms of uh, treatment of psychotic disorders say for example, uh, schizophrenia for example, paranoia for example, unipolar depression for example, okay, manic depression for example. Okay. Now, in these types of uh, psychotic disorders, okay, the consultant psychiatrist will recommend a drug to you. Okay. You have to depend on uh, certain type of uh, drugs, because these are the externally induced chemicals to your body, which will finally uh, stabilize the biochemical regulation within the brain. 
and once that biochemical uh, stability is retained in the brain then uh, you know you can uh, simultaneously you know start giving certain type of psychotherapy so that the dependence on the drugs starts reducing okay you cannot make somebody you uh, know completely dependent on the drug for the entire life so that's the basic difference between the neurotic and psychotic disorders tomorrow when we meet uh, we would uh, first talk about the whole set of uh, neurotic disorders we would deliberately ignore psychotic disorders because that is under the purview of the psychiatrist neurotic disorders are something that psychologist would uh, know uh, would be very helpful in terms of uh, getting you out of it so we will look at them the whole range the symptoms and then we would move to what we actually intend to that is adjustment disorders and uh, personality disorders